performance wise, I thought it was um, at least good enough to not lose a game. Um, the chance we created, the, the quality of chances is more the interesting thing. Um, you know, so it's not easy away from home. Um, so disappointed that we didn't end up with something from the game. And obviously, key decision in the game went against us. Um, you know, which the VR for the offside, I'm, I'm all right with that. You know, people say about toes, so it's toes off. So if you're offside, you're offside. I've got no problem with that. But the, the sending off or the chance of said, I'm, I'm very, very surprised by that. Because when you're a defender, an ex defender, forget about modern technology and VR, that you're thinking you're off, you know, as soon as you do that. Because Beto's clearly in his stride, he's breaking across. The thing that worries me about the game is players who don't go down and roll around and all that don't get decisions. And if you do and you slide on your face and all that, they seem to. And I've, I've mentioned this many, many times. Players who are trying to stand their feet, trying to get, and you can see clearly Beto's trying to stand his feet to go and score a goal. Um, he doesn't do anything and nothing gets given other than a yellow card. And, you know, I, I'm amazed. Um, I don't know whether they still do it. Referees used to talk about inside the V. He's clearly inside the V, cutting inside the V. Um, the defender's a long way off, in my opinion. I, I can't see how he's going to get there. Um, and they don't give that. And I think that's a massive decision in a game like this. Do you have any frustration that you've decided for those decisions that have been doing that? Since, I do for the chances we created. You know, to come away from home is not easy to create 16 chances next year, 1.5, 1.6, whatever it was. You know, they're important moments, and that's showing that you are creating the right level of chance. Um, you know, it's been a frustration since I've been here. The last moment of truth, the last pass, the last slide that, you know, Dom, uh, uh, sorry, Dwight puts a, a, a fantastic ball over Jack Harrison and he's done great. He gets there and he's got time to get there and it's maybe the wrong foot. You know, if he goes with his right foot, he just puts it over the keeper, them sort of things. Beto misses from short distance. It comes at him fast, but, you know, you expect that. Beto does great to get him behind and finish that sometimes marginal call. You know, that's why it goes. Manga gets one pull back and the keeper ends up making a save. You know, we allow the keeper to make a save. They're big chances away from home, you know, in the Premier League or at home. Um, so happy with that side of thing. Never really looked involved. I can't, I, you might tell me wrong, I can't remember Jordan having to make a save really, um, which means the defensive unit's doing its job and finding them key moments in attack has been a frustration since I've been at the club. Given Southampton's record so far this season, it was a missed opportunity. It's a what, sorry? Given Southampton's record. No, 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 no game's easy in the Premier League. No game's easy in the Premier League. They're just another side that we had to play. And we delivered a performance that could win the game, certainly not lose the game. So I'm very frustrated to lose the game. What was your process with the fact that you not started? Oh, the fact the team had beaten in five and, he's, and the centre halves have done very well, and I thought they did again today. How close was it on the uh, In what sense? Obviously, he was injured for that Oh, yeah, no, no, he, he, he was fine. He, I think he, he he's, wasn't quite with it in the first half, got stronger in the second half. Illy took a knock. Um, and he was limping a bit, and it's you know we had to we had to change it. Um, yeah, so and Jesper and Jack is is a tight call at the moment. You know, Jack worked pretty well actually from the ten I thought. So, but yeah, there's tight calls at the moment. Sean, could you explain that on the substitution that they've been died? Did you say he's got an injury? Yeah, he's got a dead. Well, it looks like a dead leg, but it was bad enough where he was limping. So obviously that's not helpful when you want to play to play at full full tilt and deliver what he can. Did that change your thinking with regards to how you might potentially? Change the game, sort of well, tactically, it was more with Beto and Dom. I didn't think Dom was, you know, doing enough in the game. So, therefore, I wanted Beto to come on and see if he could affect it, which he so nearly did, of course. Um, and Jack going in the 10, we know he can play there. Obviously, with Beto in the team, we're thinking getting as many crosses in as possible as well and playing longer, which we did. And, and it so nearly worked, of course. Lots of focus now on the tricky December run of, of fixtures. I don't think you've not focused on that, have you? It seems like I seem to get asked about it every single week. And we haven't even got there. We're five games ago, I was getting asked about that. But does it almost feel as though this is the period here to capitalise? No, no, it feels like the Premier League. It feels like this is what happens in the Premier League. I've been in it 10, this is my 10th season. There's, there's bits in the season where you go, that one looks tricky. You've got to go through it. Every team will have the same sort of thing, you know. Um, so I can assure you the top teams look at it the same. They're looking at it going, they're tricky fixtures. That's the way it goes in the Premier League. What would be the message to the players after the game? Did you mention the high shot counts and the XG and all that kind of Yeah, just wanting more. Just constantly wanting more. You know, not settling for just, I call it all rightness. You know, wanting more. That drive to come down here, dominate, which we have in the sense of chances. We, you, know, we, we don't want, you don't need to dominate these games of the ball because 
with all due respect to Southam, they have a lot of the ball, but they don't really, I don't think they really opened us up too much. I wasn't really worried today about being opened up. The counter, obviously, eventually, they're going to go off them. But really, you think, I can't, like you say, you might correct me because it's immediately after the game. I can't honestly remember Jordan looking in to been stretched at all, hardly. Um, so, you know, our shape was good. The energy was good to win the ball back. We won it in so many key places. My frustration is not making the most of that. You know, I think there was Dwight driving him the heart of the defence first half, has won too many touches. Second half, I think Ganner's driving at the fence, plays a good ball. Second ball from, you know, uh, I think it was, yes, but just too far. You know, these kind of margins, but they're really, really important. You know, that last pass is so, like Manga, Manga goes through at the end, he, he cuts open, he shoots, but if he just reverse it, Dwight's, or probably either way, actually, you know, he's got two passes on. It's that moment of clarity, I think, is the difference today, because we didn't find that. It was from our performance, by the way. But from their performance, in my opinion, I don't, I can't remember Jordan having to do too much. It seemed as though there was a flourish after the substitutions when Jack came inside the number 10 role, Dwight went out to the left. What was the thinking behind that? Just trying to affect the game, you know, trying to trying to find a way to create more and have more clarity. Sure. Sorry, when the ball went in, better. I mean, it was a very tidy finish, actually. It was ironically, he, he didn't capitalise on one that would have counted. I mean, with the naked eye, did you think it looked like a perfectly good equaliser? I know you're saying... No, it's too but... no, it's too too far away for me to call that one. No, I, I actually think that's the right thing. and I think that's the right use of VR. I'm not what a blazer, you know, oh, I was only a toe offside. If you're a toe offside, you're offside. They're the rules. So actually, I agree with VR for that. So I've got no complaints about that. But the sending off is one. I, I, I personally am very, very extremely surprised. And I thought you could tell in the stadium... Everyone was pretty surprised. I know their side were pretty surprised because we see it in their faces. You, know, um, you just get days like where every every little thing just seems to be not in your, your favour. No, I don't think it was necessarily that. I, I, I don't think the referee was was on top of his game, but I think there was a few weird calls for both sides, um, and that well, that one went to VAR. So I think in the cold light of the VAR situation, this is where I think managers do get frustrated. People may well agree with me, but. I know the players and I think the referee should. If you're looking at Beto, everyone everyone more or less knows he's quick, especially when he's in his stride, he's through in his stride. He's on a great touch, which allows that stride pattern to continue to go through on goal. I don't see how the centre half's catching him there. I don't see that. I'd be very surprised, but we'll never know, obviously, but I'd be very, very surprised. Sean, you mentioned that you've, been, that you've said throughout your time as a manager about players not making the most of when they go down and not getting the decisions. I'm sure you've mentioned that to the officials at, at different points. What do they say? When you point that out? Well, it's the same old thing, isn't it? That's why people go down. Because they don't get it if they try and stand up. So therefore they go down. It's just logic. I just don't like it. I don't like my players to do it. They, they don't probably do it enough. Um, but it's I, I don't agree with it. I can't be completely hypocritical. We all are to some degree in this job, but I can't be completely hypocritical. I go to the powers of being and I say, why are you, why are you um, the players who stand up and stay up get nothing, the ones who literally go down with hardly any touch, get everything. I said, so why are you allowing that? Why are you, why are you not differentiating? But they just don't want to touch it. You know, how many bookings do you see people diving still? There's people diving all over the place, but they don't give them. Well, they do, but not very often. And then they'll say, oh, we've, we've increased that. And you go, yeah, all right, from two to five, you know, and you go, oh, yeah, okay. It's like 27 a game, you know what I mean? But it's for the good of the game. That's all I talk about. It's not about me. It's not about having a football club. Millions of kids out there all doing it. I watch them. My kid was to grow up through the system. I used to go and watch him play at six. Every kid's diving all over the place. I think it's completely wrong. And for the morals of the game, I think it's completely wrong. But no one seems to. So I'm just out there on my own, just still peddling this. But that's not about today. But that's the bigger picture of the good of football, in my opinion. Would, you, would your advice be then to your player today that really has to think about making a meal? No, I don't think it was that. No, I think no, I think today was a clear, in my opinion, I've got to make that clear because some of you may not agree and that's fine. But I was an ex-centre half and when you, the angle, they used to call it inside the V, as I mentioned. So when you're cutting inside the V towards goal, it's even if he put a straight touch and he's going towards the touchline, but his touch is really good and it's inside the V going towards the goal. The player brings in that, I just can't see how the angles that the, the centre half's going to get round. I just can't see it. So when he's in full flow, that is. So therefore, I imagine he doesn't bring him down and he's in, I'll, be, I'll be stunned if the centre-half got round and made that tackle. And I think that's where they've got to know their players. You know, we know there's quicker players and slower players in the Premier League. So in that instance, that's what you're actually looking at. Could that player get there? I think I'd, I'd be amazed if he did, if, if it ran out. But of course, we'll never know. Okay, folks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Changes.